welcome to the channel. I'm Tom A. Fikes. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Today we have a ton of tools at my feet. Today we are going to be putting on another blue anodized part onto my Husqvarna FE501. If you all are new to the channel, this is my 2017 Husqvarna FE501. As you can see, set up in supermoto configuration. If you guys like the bike, down below there is a small playlist that is always growing of this bike. So anything that pertains to this bike will go on that playlist on my channel down below. So if you guys like the bike and you haven't seen it before, I definitely recommend checking that out. A lot of different how-tos and an overview on the bike. So today is going to be a two-in-one video. I am going to be showing you all how to put on your clutch lever and your front brake lever. So these are from AS3 Performance. And they are pretty cool for a couple reasons. One, they're anodized blue and match a ton of other stuff that I have anodized blue on the bike. And unlike the stock ones that do not move forward when they are pressed on, these ones are sprung both ways. So if you ever fall and land on this, it bends rather than just snaps off. Now that's not really gonna matter on my bike because I have these hand guards that will most likely protect it from a fall. And I don't take this bike off road. As you can see, it is a beautiful, really clean bike not a scratch on it. You could go over this thing with a fine tooth comb and really not find anything wrong with it. This bike is just too clean. Obviously with these tires, it's not gonna do any good off-road. I do still have a set of dirt tires on the stock wheels, but it's just a lot of work to switch them over. And again, this bike is just so clean, I would have a hard time messing it up. That being said, I do love off-road riding bikes. So I am going to, down the road, get a KTM 300 two-stroke dirt bike for mainly off-road only. I will still put a California plate on it just so I can ride it to and from certain trails if I ever need to. And that way I don't have to deal with the red sticker and can only ride certain time of year. A lot of you might hear that and say, wait, how are you gonna put a California plate on a two-stroke? Well, you're just gonna have to wait and find out. I will definitely be making a detailed video on doing that. And I promise that is something I am going to do. I will have a street legal two-stroke bike on the channel and hopefully i can help a lot of you guys get the same thing because i have never seen a two-stroke on the road in california i've seen some instagram posts with two-stroke bikes out of state but that's out of state here in good old california you can't do much of anything uh they take away your freedoms left and right here so loopholes to get them back are always awesome and i will help you hopefully be able to do the same thing if you live in this beautiful state california I've been breaking these up into different videos, but today is gonna be a two for one video, like I said, just because these are so similar. Uh, if you're replacing one, you're most likely replacing the other, unless like you happen to fall and break this one and you don't care to have a mismatch. Leave the stock one on the left until you eventually break that two and then upgrade down the road, um, or just don't care and have a mismatched. Me, personally, I want these to match. Uh, mine aren't even broken, I just want them to look a certain way, so that's why I'm replacing them. Anyways, I am going to start with your front brake. So distinguish which is which. This is obviously the front brake and this is your clutch lever. So we're gonna start with this. So first thing is first, you're gonna take it over to the bike. The front brake is a little bit easier than the clutch lever. So you're gonna need two hands. So I'm gonna be putting the camera down, but it's pretty simple. All you do, get this boot out of your way. You got a 10 millimeter up top and a 10 millimeter directly underneath it. I got two 10 millimeter wrenches right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and I will catch up with you right after that. So you just get this bolt out, put it to the side, get the nut out, put that to the side. Do not lose those, you're gonna be reusing them. So now we got the stock lever out. This is where you would adjust the pull. Uh, you're not gonna be reusing that same feature on the new one. You actually have the adjustment right here. That's if you are also getting an AS3 performance part. If you get a different one, I can't say for sure it's gonna be the same way. It might be like this style, but for me, an AS3 performance, it is going to be right there for the adjustment. So super simple, get that off, throw the new one back in, same configuration, same bolt, same nut. So I'm gonna get that on there, tighten it up, and make the adjustments that need to be made. 
get it back on there, snug back down with the 10 millimeters, top and bottom, put the boot back on. And then in order to make your adjustments, it is just this outside right there, bolt. Um, not this one, this nut that's spinning, but this bolt, put it to the distance you want by pulling this out and hooking it up and then snug this bolt down to, to the lever and that'll prevent this from spinning back in and adjusting your throw. So for me, I just wanted it about the same as stock was for distance so I can get to it. Obviously make sure your front brake still works. I'm gonna need two hands to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down and then we're gonna start on the clutch side. So pretty similar over here, only difference is you're gonna pull back the boot and there is going to be a eight millimeter down here rather than a 10 millimeter on the other side. And then you're going to need some kind of a hex bit or an Allen key that I'm gonna use. And same thing, take this off. Uh, there is a little plunger in here. Be careful that that does not fly out. And if it does, catch it, don't lose it because you're going to reuse that. So I'm gonna get this taken apart. So same deal, get this guy out, save this nut and bolt. And then the plunger is right there that I was talking about. Uh, I'd recommend lubing this guy up again. I'm gonna just throw some more white lithium grease on it. And some bikes, you will be reusing this adjuster, this AS3 Performance one. It has its own built in, so no need to save that guy. But if you guys are getting a different one, you might have to reuse that. So if you don't have something to adjust the length on this, you gotta take that apart and put it on the new one. So anyways, now that I have the adjuster already installed, I'm going to make sure that plunger goes right back in there. Like I said, I'm gonna grease it up a little bit, put this new one on, put the nut and bolt back together, tighten it down. Same as we did over here, make our little adjustments, get it to the throw that you want, and then test it out, make sure it's good, and then you will be done. So I will catch up with you right after that. Now off of the stock lever, you are going to have to grab the little boot that was right here and put it around just to hold that plunger in place. It's not necessary, but it is definitely nice to have. And then you just slip that bolt back through, tighten it up with the nut on the back, pull the cover back over and you are done. Now, same thing with the other one. You're gonna make your little adjustment, test it out, make sure everything works the way you like it, and then you are good to go. And just like that, we got the levers installed, a little more sleek looking. Again, match everything else is blue anodized. The pulls don't feel any different, but uh, the metal feels nicer, just the shape of it. It's, it's more of a machined finish. It looks a lot more complete. Just where these look like forged, um, a little less fancy, definitely stock. So I got a stockpile growing. If you guys want any of these stock parts for an FE501 or FE350 or whatever else it'll fit, I'm sure it'll fit a lot of KTMs and a lot of other Husqvarna bikes. Just don't know off the top of my head which ones. Uh, shoot me a DM on Instagram and we can work something out. Don't care to have these parts just sitting here collecting dust. So if you want anything, shoot me a DM and we'll figure something out. All right, so that is gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully that helped somebody get their clutch and brake levers installed. If it did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you guys like the bike, anything like that, give it a thumbs up, I appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, see you later.